Yes. Concentrate. Adjust your stance. Adjust your stance, young'un. No, you ain't adjusting it. You call that a combat stance. You look like some drunk punk teen, trying and failing to scare a bouncer on a Friday night. You ain't gonna command respect from your opponent looking like that. It won't matter how you look once you put them on their backs. Is that right? You think you're hard enough to pull that off, do ya? The last 86 times you've rushed me, you've ended up on your ass and... <clears throat> the last 87 times you've rushed me, you've ended up on your ass. What do you mean, how do I keep doing that? You rushed me at first. Like some fucking Naruto prat. And I slammed you as a result. It ain't hard. What? Won't it work on anyone less experienced than me? Rushing at someone head on without a game plan will only work on a mindless fog. If you're stronger and faster than them. If it's against anyone with a shred of experience, you'll get your ass handed to ya. If it's against the Alpha or his Undress, you'll be dead 87 times over by now. Can't you just transform and fight in your old form? Have you not been paying attention to my lessons, young'un? Your old form isn't some fucking limit break special attack that automatically beats your opponent. You've seen that already when you tried it with the Alpha Claw lot. Yeah, it makes you a fuck ton stronger and quicker and less vulnerable to damage. But it comes at a limit. Use too much of your power, taking or dealing damage and you risk going feral. And I'll have to knock you out like I did before. Which, if you remember, I did in my human form. Your war form is an extension of yourself. It amplifies what you already have. So if you're likely to charge in at first like an absolute fucking donut with your head down as a human, then your wolf instincts are likely to do the same. Yeah, a seven odd fucking foot charging lichen with teeth and claws will do the job against your average body. But we ain't dealing with no average baddies, are we? You got the Alpha and his untress. The Alpha could turn any part of his body into his wolf form and take your head off with the speed of a pro martial artist which he just happens to be. And the Untress is one of the most lethal assassins out there. Oh, we got a long way to go with you, young'un. Right, I'm having a fag. A smoke. Don't turn me back on ya. Oh, what? <laughs> Good try, young'un. You ain't tried a jumping strike before. Was decent. But don't make so much noise when you're pushing off the ground. You're too heavy footed. Need to be lighter. If a big lad like me can leap in the air without making a noise, then you can too. Less of the excuses. You're only little. <sighs> Smoking's bad for me. I'm centuries old, young'un. If the White Wolf were gonna die smoking, it would have been a long time ago. Nah. Let's try your stance again. Bend your knees slightly. Not too much. Well, it looks like you're trying to squat and have a shit. Don't roll your eyes at me unless you want a dry slap. Nah, it's a bit better. Now raise your hands, tuck your elbows in, chin low to your chest. Good. 
I look somewhat decent. Like you're ready for a good fucking round now. A stance like that is decent if you're anticipating your opponent to attack first. A lot of mystics do favor getting the first strike in. A red fang vampire will come at you from all angles in a whirlwind of blades and teeth. The Alpha Claw like to use their fists and brawl before transforming. Alpha has them cutting their teeth in underground cage fights to toughen themselves up. Makes for tougher werewolves when they transform. But it ain't just these that you might be fighting, young'un. There are all sorts of beasties out there, and most don't fight alone. Sometimes you need to get the first strike in to level the playing field. You need to hit hard, fast, and deadly. But most things have their most dangerous assets facing forward. You have the agility on your side. Don't rely on brute force. Your war form has plenty of it. But let's not ignore what you have in human form. I want you to rush to the side as fast as you can. Not head on. This will force your opponent to turn and face you. This is when you either leap straight up and down on top of them or charge forward low to the ground and jump upwards into them. Imagine a dog going for the throat. Which is best? Mm, that's up to you to decide. But quick changes in speed and direction will force an opponent to have to think on their feet. An experienced fighter won't be thrown off by it. But you'll make them work harder for it. And no proper fight is gonna be stopped with one move. Once you close the distance in this way, you use everything you have to take them down. Your fists, your elbows, your knees, your fucking feet, your head, your fucking teeth. Fight like a wolf, even in human form, but do it well. Everything you throw needs to be well timed and planned. Don't swing blindly. Nah, rush me. Go on, fucking rush me. If you don't like me smoking, then knock the ciggy out me mouth. Come on, and have a go! Good. Charge to the side, we turn the match here at- <laughs> Good young'un. You went for the charge, and let for the throw. Good effort. <laughs> Good kick. That's it. Use your leg to push off me, and into the air. Now come down hard on me! Take me head off! <laughs> Good. Beautiful effort, young'un. Your charge to the side was fast. The way you pivoted and charged low towards me was smooth. And your leap upwards towards me throat was decent. Your elbow strikes are decent. You're still trying to throw too much power into them. Speed will create power. Focus on the quickest method of hitting the target instead of swinging widely to create power. You've got some strong legs. Hitting me guard with a double kick. Then pushing yourself off to then use gravity to bring your heel down towards me head. Was brilliant. I didn't know you could flip in the air like that. You've got some kind of athletic background, have you? <laughs> what? Of course I blocked every hit. Just if you fight well and get the moves right. Doesn't mean you gotta smash your enemy with every attack and win. Your enemy is looking to survive and kill you back. Combat is forever changing 
and I just showed you the very basics of closing the distance. Like a lichen. Fire. What? Yeah. Good eye there, young'un. The Untrust does like leaping attacks, but her agility is up there with the best of them. When she leaped towards me, even in wolf form, my senses had to be on full whammy to try and deal with whatever she threw at me once she got in close. Nothing leaps like her. And she's still got some fucking painful strikes in, even if I countered or blocked. Could you use her leap against her? <laughs> That's what we're working towards. But remember this, young'un. A trained fighter will have infinite ways to counter your counters. And the Untrus will have even more than that. Nah, it's time to work on your strikes whilst dodging and blocking. Yeah. I'm still smoking. You didn't knock it out of my mouth. So you'll have to deal with me smoke during the next exercise. <laughs> Life ain't fair, young'un. It's furry, mean, and will tear out chunks of your throat. Nah. As you strike, block with the other hand. Hit me with anything you want, but make sure to block me counter it. Ready? Hit! Hit! I said I was gonna hit ya, so fucking block, young'un. Don't fucking complain. If it hurts too much, then you best fucking block it. Come on, again! Again! Ha! Ha! young'un. Twelve hours training is enough for now, I guess. For one day. But we ain't finished yet. Come with me. The sun's going down. I want you to get a good feel of what it's like to be amongst nature at night. No, young'un. I don't mean strolling through the grass with a bottle of cider with your mates howling at the moon like a twat. I mean sitting there in the woods as far away from humanity as possible and sensing everything. Being one with nature. A, a hippie. <laughs> Guess you could call me that. I ain't no tree hogging Wally though. You'll soon see what I mean. This is Epin Forest, the largest untouched open land in London that still belongs to the wild. I've lived deep in this forest for a long time. No one's found me yet, despite how hard they've tried. You miss civilization? A little. Can't risk you going back out there, young'un. Not until you're ready. The Alpha Claw will be looking for us, and they got a lot of friends. The Untress could be out here now, tracking us, for all we know. That's why it's best to stay here and train. We never know when the fight may come looking for us, and you ain't ready to go looking for it yet. But, you're doing good, kid. Just keep going. Now this. This. This is it. This. Is nature. Untouched. Undisturbed. Breathe it in, young'un. Even in your human form. Your body belongs to nature. If you learn to fine-tune your senses to the world around you, then nothing's gonna slip past you in war form. 
How does it make you feel being out here in the wilderness? <laughs> like you want a drink? Can't say I disagree with you there, young one. What I wouldn't give to be back at Theo's with a good single malt in me hand. Theo and I go way back. Theo ain't no human, young un. But he's sensitive about his mystic identity. So I don't make an habit of sharing his secrets. What? What did I mean before when I said Theo's bar was accorded neutral territory? It means the accords, which is like a large membership of all the hard hitting groups of mystics, have agreed on it being a place where no outside conflict can be brought inside. To do so would shame and demonize the offending party from every other group within the Accords. Disrespecting Accord in neutral territory will have every supernatural power gunning for your head. So never break it. Hey. Well, yeah. If I went there for a drink and Alpha Claw came in, they'd have to behave themselves. But soon as I stood outside, all bets would be off. I can't be bothered with the drama, young'un. I've had enough of it in my time. And no doubt Alpha has spies looking around there. It's society. I actually do a lot for the mystic community. However illegal it might be. You never know who their sympathizers are. Even if the mystic community in this country is relatively friendly at large. Hey. Yeah. Could say I have friends. But I ain't willing to risk their lives and the lives of their families. I've lost too much in the past, human. Far too much. I'm better off living out my long life away from others. Keep them safe. Once I train you up into a true lycan warrior, you'll be able to go off on your own and leave me to my peace and quiet. What? We need to take Alpha and his untrust down first. Huh. Maybe. Ah. I don't think I could, young'un. What? I'm not protecting him. Maybe I could kill him. So why don't I? You're not gonna let this lie, are ya? Every fucking day, you ask me why I haven't killed him. You really think it would assure the safety of thousands of people? Stop the murders. How about this? For a question then, young'un. You told me before that he was a good friend of yours back in college. Right. Right. But you think you could kill him now? What if he were one of your own blood? Bit more thought provoking now, nah, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. The Alpha is me blood. He's my little nephew. Your predictable free cat is the exact reason why I was in no worry to tell you. Of course I was going to tell you at some point, but I was looking for the right time. Problem is, there's never a right time to tell someone that they may have to kill the lad that they once held in their arms when they were just a pup. That's right. His mother was my sister. She was a lunar wolf too. One night, years ago, I met her for a run. He went running a lot in wolf form. I look forward to the day when my little nephew would run beside us. Like the old days of our kind. But I lost her. She was always a much faster runner than me. She bolted ahead. Then I smelled something. 
fucking horrible smell. The darkest kind of magic. And I smell her fear and confusion. And then she was just... gone. I searched high and low, but never found her. I knew, deep down, in my heart, that she were gone, though. If I were faster, if I were smarter, if I told her to slow down, told her to wait, she'd still be here. And my nephew would have been raised by his mother, and she would have ran with him during his first times turn into the light of the moon. He would have been raised with love and respect in his heart instead of hate and the thirst for vengeance. He blames me for his mother's death. That's right, young'un. He knows who I am to him and he knows that I was the last one to be with her. Now you know why he hates me so much. I watched him grow from afar. I couldn't get involved in his life. Everywhere I go, fanatics search for me, and other mystics haunt me. For countless fucking reasons. And I swore to never get involved with family or friends again. Should God forbid I lose someone else I love. As a result of my pledge, I saw my little nephew slowly change into a monster. And now it's too late. He won't ever see reason and he won't stop. Even after he's defeated me. He isn't the Alpha because we share blood, young'un. The White Wolf man oh isn't influenced by genetics. It's passed down into the strongest lichen at the time. Our people would fight immortal lichen combat in order to claim the altar of White Wolf. I used to be monstrous, bloodthirsty, merciless. I killed any lichen that dared challenge me back in the old days. And through the decades, I saw people lose their way to the modern ways of man. I welcomed it. Means I don't need to soak my claws in the blood of our kin just to keep this curse. The curse that never allows me to rest. But if I were to be defeated, the man O would pass on to the victor. And folk knows what monster they would become as a result. And if Alpha defeated me, the White Wolf Man O merging with the mantle of the Alpha, he will become a monster. Unseen since ancient times. No one will be ready for it. But I assume that's me nephew's plan. Kill me. Take me mantle. Become a god. And take revenge for the loss of his mother. I wouldn't blame him. Two birds with one claw. What? Who are you calling selfish, young'un? Of course I won't let him do it so easily. I won't allow myself to be killed by my own blood. I let him butcher all mankind and any other who refuse to worship him out of some self-pity party. It's just hard for a man. What? Did I ever spend time with him when he was young with his mother? No. Because it would have been too dangerous. And even more dangerous after. I didn't abandon him. You know what, young'un? Fine. I am a coward. I ain't ever gonna argue with you. What? 
I'm not cowering away from an argument, just like I cowered away from protecting him. Oi, where you going? Young'un! To the bar. Don't be an idiot. What do you mean, don't be a coward? Fine then. Learn the hard way. I'm too old to be arguing with a rebellious fucking little puppy. I see you back here when you've learned the hard way. You like that kid? Hey, hey, you like that kid? You know what? In some clothes. I keep a few bags in the back in case some daft fucking wolf decides to have a run through the woods late at night. I can't have you in my beer garden, fucking in the nude. Here you go. Get dressed, wash your face, and come in for a drink like. Come on. That's better. An old fellow like me don't want to be having conversation with someone stood in the nude out in my backyard. It's a nice quiet one tonight. What are you drinking? By the looks of you, you need something strong. Had a fight with old Luca, have you? I ain't won the prize. But that old fox lived through and been through more than any of us have ever been through. Whatever will. I try not to understand his ways. But accepting for who he is. Like I do for everyone else here. I'm proud of me bar being what it is. So take a load off here. Yeah. Take your time. Once you've got your head around things, go back to him. You ain't gonna learn about your new powers from anyone else as knowledgeable as him. Oh, fucking hell. Ah, are you sure about that, Theo, sir? Ah, why, hello. Great, great, darling. 